Okay, so let's say that you have a data set of, um, of categorical variables and you need to, to analyze it. Like here, you're staring at a, uh, a data set where um, a bunch of people, I think, um, how many? Let's see here. 400 people were asked what their favorite video game was. And you've got this data and you need to like report some results. So the obvious thing to do is like a list of what the most commonly favorited video games were. What's the favorite one out of your sample? So really what you want to do is count how many people like Red Dead Redemption, how many people like Minecraft, how many people liked Assassin's Creed, and so forth. Now, essentially what you need is a frequency table. You've got your X variable, the games, and then you've got the frequency of those values, how many people liked that particular game. Now we could count this by hand, but you know, that's tedious. Uh, computers should be able to do grunt work for us. So let me show you how to calculate a, um, a frequency table for categorical data using Excel. And then we'll do one for continuous data using Excel as well. Let's highlight our data. And then go to Insert, like I've got right there. And there's two tables that are going to be particularly useful. The recommended pivot tables and then just plain blank pivot tables that we need to, to populate. If you click on recommended pivot tables, it automatically computes the frequency table for this entire data set that I have highlighted. So we can look and see that 32 people liked Assassin's Creed, 37 liked Call of Duty Warzone, 47 liked Minecraft and 47 like Red Dead Redemption 2. So the, the most favorited games are, it's a tie, it's Minecraft and Red Dead Redemption. So we would say that this is a bimodal distribution because we have two modes. We have two equally most occurring values. All right, so in categorical data, the, the mode is a very nice interpretation as being you know here the, the most popular, the most frequently occurring. Now, if we wanted to embed this table inside our spreadsheet um, or have more control over it, we don't need to take its recommendations. We can just do um, our own pivot table. And so we'll click on here, this blank pivot table. Tell it where the data is. So you, just, you already have it highlighted here. So it's, it's column A. And then where should it put the pivot table? I want to put it in this, this spreadsheet that you're looking at right here. We need to tell it where to start printing that table. We can just minimize this little dialog box here by clicking that. Tell it I want the table to start, let's say, here. Let's expand the dialog box and click OK. Now when we do, we've got this table that shows up, but it's empty. We need to fill in all the blanks here. Everything that you need to fill in is actually on the right. Now we only had one column of data selected. It was the games column, it was column A. And so that shows up here in the, the list of variables that we can choose from. So we're just gonna select games and it immediately um, populates all of the values of games, right? So it looks like we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 games that showed up. We don't have any frequencies yet, but at least we know that these are all the games. So there was no Lego Batman or something in there. There was no, well, whatever. These are the only ones that show up in our data set. Now, what we would like is a bunch of values to go along with this. So let's take this games and let's put it in values. And then the default is the count, the frequency. And these numbers should look familiar. We had 47 for Minecraft and 47 for Red Dead Redemption. Now it could have filled in other things here than just the counts. You can click on that down arrow here, click on value field settings, and then it turns out there was, you know, we could have had averages and products and min and max and stuff like that. But for our purposes, what we really wanted to know was how many people liked Assassin's Creed and how many people like Minecraft. Here we go. So what's the mode? Bimodal. Minecraft, and Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, we can take this skill set that we just learned and apply it to continuous variables, too. 
So let's look at a continuous data set. I've got one preloaded right here. And this is made up grades for um, a class. We've got 60 pretend students. And I'd like to know what the distribution of grades looks like. Now, unlike the frequency table for video games, the numbers actually mean something. Order actually matters. So there was no particular order that, you know, our our video games were listed where we had Red Dead Redemption 9th or something like that. Here, you know, the 94 has got to come before 95, 95 before numbers, 96, and so forth. All right, now let's highlight our data, go to Insert, and click on Recommended Pivot Tables, and we'll see that it's not quite going to work. It says, eh, we can't recommend pivot tables for this data set. There's too much funkiness going on. There's Basically, it senses that you would have tons of little categories. Um, you probably have uh, a continuous uh, data set. It's hesitant to recommend something. So we click Cancel. We need to fill in our table ourselves. So we click on Pivot Table like we did before. You know, we've already selected our data set, so that's already filled in there. This is in the this worksheet called Continuous, and it's column A. I'd like to put our table into the existing worksheet, maybe put it right there, so C1, and click OK, and we have a blank table, and now we need to populate that. So let's click on Grades, and when you check on that, it immediately populates this row table uh, square right here, and it also populates it with all of the different grades that happened to come up in this particular exam. So not that many actually. There was some 92s, 93s, and all the way up to 102. Now I'd like to know what was the most frequently occurring grade. So I need to have some kind of information here. How many people got 92s? How many people got 93s? How many people nailed it and got 102? They got the bonus points as well. So let's grab grades again and put it in values. The default is the count. The count. Frequencies, in other words. So it looks like the grades here were fairly evenly distributed. Six people get 92s, six people get 93s. But if I'm looking for the modal grade for this data set, it's right there at 97. So more people got a 97 than just about anything else. Now, uh, if there were a lot more than these 10 different specific grades that people got, then, then we need to start doing some aggregating. If this was truly continuous, like if this was class average, then you would have 92s, you'd have 92.01s, you'd have 92.013s, you'd have 92.597s. Essentially, every single student would have their extremely unique average because right, you got all those decimals. And so, so the mode stops being very descriptive like that. What you have to do is kind of lump together. So maybe lump all the 92s and change together. Maybe lump all the 93s, you know, 93.01 all the way to 93.999. Lump all those together. You have to put things into bins. And we'll save that for another video. All right, thanks for listening.